Hi everybody! In this video, I will be covering several topics and sections from Chapter 11. However, I will not be covering every section due to the fact that some are not as significant as others. So first up, we have simple harmonic motion. Now, the first question we must ask ourselves is what is it? Well, in plain terms, simple harmonic motion is a vibrating system for which the restoring force is directly proportional to the negative of the displacement. Spring oscillations. If an object vibrates or oscillates back and forth over the same path, each cycle taking the same amount of time, the motion is considered periodic. Some examples of periodic motion are a pendulum and the rotation of the Earth. The mass and spring system is a useful model for a periodic system. So in this figure, a mass vibrating at the end of a uniform spring is displayed. We can note that letters A and C are purely potential, while letter B is purely kinetic. Also in this figure, we notice that the force is being exerted by the spring. This gives us the equation force equals the negative value of the spring constant multiplied by the displacement. Now, the negative sign on the force indicates that it is a restoring force, which means it is directed to restore the mass to its equilibrium position. So right over here, you see that the box is at x equals 0. Here, x equals 0 represents the equilibrium position. Now, the restoring force acts in such a way to bring the spring back to the equilibrium position. Here we have just a few key terms. So, the displacement is measured from the equilibrium point and is often noted by the letter x. The maximum displacement is the amplitude. Um, a cycle is a full to and fro motion, and this figure shows half of a cycle. See the curve, that's half of the cycle. A period is the time required to complete one cycle, and can often be marked by a capital T. And the frequency is the number of cycles completed per second, which is often denoted by a lowercase f. This diagram shows that the energy changes from potential energy to kinetic energy and back again as the spring oscillates. Now, the in this figure, the force is being exerted on the spring. This gives us the equation force equals the positive value of the spring constant multiplied by the displacement. So here we have just a few key formulas that are just helpful to know. So here again is force is equal to the negative value of the spring constant multiplied by the displacement when the force is being exerted by the spring. Here you have force equals the positive value of the spring constant multiplied by the displacement when the force is being exerted on the spring. And just know that to find period you divide frequency by 1, so t equals 1f, and to find the frequency, you divide the period by 1, so f equals 1 over t. So now we have a few practice problems. So our first problem is, a spring is stretched by 5 meters and has a force constant of 2 newtons per meters. Calculate the force applied. Well, what we would do here is we are given our k, our spring constant, which is 2 newtons per meter. Okay. We are also given our extension or displacement, which is 5 meters. So to find the force, we're going to write out our equation, force equals negative kx, okay, and now we're going to plug in our numbers, so force is equal to negative 2 newtons per meters, oh, uh-oh, no, stop, um, 
My apologies. Two newtons per meters multiplied by five meters. Now, the meters cancel out, so you're only left with newtons. So you have the force equal to negative 10 newtons. So that is your answer for this first practice problem. Next problem. A force of 100 newtons is stretching a spring by 0 0.2 meters. What is the force constant? Well, here we are given our force, 100 newtons, and we're given our displacement of 0.2 meters. We have to find the force constant. So if we start with F equals negative kx, we want to get k by itself. So divide both sides by x, so you have negative k equals f over x. Divide both sides by negative 1 and you have k equals negative f over x. So we're going to plug in our numbers. k equals, so if f is 100 here but we have a negative so it's now going to be negative 100 newtons divided by 0.2 meters and that's going to give us a force constant of negative 500 newtons per meters. Okay? So that's how you would solve that. So next we have section three, the period and sinusoidal or sinusoidal nature of simple harmonic motion. Hold on one moment. Right here. Now if we look at the projection onto the x-axis of an object moving in a circle of radius a at a constant speed um, denoted v max with a constant velocity. We find that the x component of its velocity varies as v is equal to plus or minus the maximum velocity multiplied by the square root of 1 minus x squared over a squared. Now here figure this figure represents the figure A represents the circular motion of a small red object. Figure B depicts a side view of the circular motion, which is the x component. This is all identical to simple harmonic motion. Period and frequency. The period of the mass on a spring depends on the spring stiffness K and the mass M but not on how far you stretch the spring. We can use the period and frequency of a particle moving in a circle to find the period and frequency. And here are the formulas to do so. So the period, t, you can find by multiplying 2 pi times the square root of the mass over the spring stiffness. And here you could find the frequency by dividing, well, multiplying 1 over the, quanti the quantity of 2 pi multiplied by the spring stiffness over the mass. So here we have another practice problem. So a block of mass 1.5 kilograms is attached to the end of a vertical spring of force constant 300 newtons per meter. After the block comes to rest, it is pulled down a distance of 2 centimeters and released. 
What is the frequency of the resulting oscillation? Well, what we do first is we're given K. So our K is 300 newtons per meter. We are also given our m, which is right here. This is a bit of unnecessary information, so don't worry about that. So now we're going to use the formula F equals 1 over 2 pi. multiplied by the square root of k over m. If we plug this in, we have f equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root of 300 newtons per meters over 1.5 kilograms. And when we solve it out, we get the frequency as 2.3 hertz. Okay? Great. So does everybody see how I did that there? I just plugged in my values for that formula. So next we have the simple pendulum, which is section 4. So a simple pendulum consists of a mass at the end of a lightweight cord. We assume that the cord does not stretch and that its mass is insignificant. In order to be in simple harmonic motion, the restoring force must be proportional to the negative of the displacement. So here we have F equals the negative equals negative mass times gravity sine theta, which is proportional to sine theta and not to theta itself. However, if the angle is small, sine theta is equal to theta. So this figure here is a free body diagram of a simple pendulum. Next, we have a few formulas. So, for simple pendulums, for small angles, the force is approximately proportional to the angular displacement. And the period and frequency are, again, a little different. Instead of 1 over 2 pi, or 1 half pi, you have 2 pi. So, for simple pendulums, the period could be found by multiplying 2 pi uh, by the square root of the mass over the spring stiffness or the mass and gravity over the length or length over gravity. And the frequency can be found by multiplying 1 half pi by the square root of gravity over the length. So here's another practice problem. A pendulum makes 36 vibrations in exactly 60 seconds. What is its period and frequency? Well, we're going to answer letter A first. So, try and that. So, letter A. Okay. Well, its period can be found through T equals 1 over frequency. Do we remember that? Okay. So that gives us T equals, the 1 is also like 1 minute, so 60 seconds, right, over 36. And if we divide that and solve it out, we get the period as 1.67 seconds. Great. Now we have the frequency. 
To find the frequency, it's the same thing, except a little bit, they're just switched, the T and the F. So you have frequency equals 1 over the period. So with this, you have frequency equals 1 over 1.67 seconds. And that gets us the frequency as 0 0.6 hertz. Everybody see how I did that? Okay. Now we have section 7, wave motion. First we have to ask ourselves, what are waves? Well, waves are rhythmic disturbances that carry energy without carrying matter. So just some of the basics to know about wave motion is that energy moves from one point to another, point A to point B. Matter, however, does not do that. And a wave travels along its medium, but the individual particles just simply move up and down. Okay. Now, this figure here depicts a wave traveling on a cord. The wave travels to the right along the cord, and particles of the cord oscillate back and forth on the tabletop. Introducing wave motion. All types of traveling waves transport energy. The study of a single wave pulse shows that it is begun with a vibration and transmitted through internal forces in the medium. Continuous waves start with vibrations as well. If the vibration is simple harmonic motion, then the wave will be sinusoidal. Okay? So this here, this figure, shows the motion of a wave pulse to the right. Okay. Next, we have the characteristics of waves. Now, some common wave characteristics are amplitude, denoted by a capital A, wavelength, denoted by almost like an upside down Y, frequency F and period T, we went over those, and the wave velocity, just V, and that can be found by multiplying the wavelength by the frequency. Okay, so this wave shows the common characteristics of a single frequency continuous wave, or of a single continuous wave. So here we have another practice problem. So a sound wave traveling through water has a frequency of 500 hertz and a wavelength of 3 meters. How fast does sound travel through water? Well, here in this problem, we're going to use our velocity formula, which is wavelength times frequency. So we're given our frequency of 500 hertz and our wavelength of 3 meters. So we have V equals wavelength times frequency. So all we're doing is just plugging in our numbers and easily multiplying. So wavelength, 3 meters, times 500 hertz. Okay. And that should give you 1,500 meters per second for your velocity. Does everybody see what I did there? I just simply distributed my numbers, solved it out. Okay, now we have section 8, types of waves. There are three major types of waves. There are longitudinal waves, transverse waves, and surface waves. In a longitudinal wave, the particles in the medium move parallel to the direction of the wave. So this means that the wave travels and oscillates in the same direction. And you can see that here. So the source moves left and right, and the coils move left and right. So they're parallel to each other. In transverse waves, the particles in the medium propagate in a direction perpendicular to the direction in which the median is vibrating. So here you can see the source is moving up and down while the coils move 
up and down, but the energy is perpendicular to that. So this simply just says that a transverse wave op oscillates perpendicular to its direction of travel. Lastly, with surface waves, well, surface waves are a combination of longitudinal and transverse waves. So this means that the particles of the wave typically move in circular or elliptical paths, as you can see here. So it creates that wave, that little curve, but not in coils, in circular paths. And if you just need a quick way to remember, longitudinal, parallel, transverse, perpendicular, and surface is a combo of both. Lastly, we have section 9, energy transported by waves. So just as with the oscillation that starts it, the energy transported by a wave is proportional to the square of the amplitude. So intensity, this is just the formula for intensity, which is energy over time divided by area or power over area. And the intensity is also proportional to the square of the amplitude I proportional to A squared. Okay? That's all. Thank you for watching.